Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Morgana here and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint this portrait of a lovely European jay. Starting here with the eye, uh, with my very fine triple zero brush and some ivory black. Uh, common wisdom has it that you should always begin a bird portrait with the eye uh, as it's the most important part of the bird gives it its uh, sort of expression and character and uh, liveliness. Uh, that way, if you uh, if you screw it up, then you haven't wasted your time painting the rest of the bird first. Uh, so that's what I'm doing today. Uh, using some quite diluted cerulean blue, just to fill in that lovely blue ring around the eye there. And then continuing on with uh, my black diluted down to a grey with uh, plenty of water uh, to do the bird's beak. You can see I'm just shading the top part of the beak there just to uh, differentiate between the upper bill and the, uh, and the lower. Now for the bird's feathers, I have uh, mixed up some uh, burnt sienna and some yellow ochre uh, on my palette uh, with plenty of water as you can see, it's quite a, quite a loose, quite a runny mix uh, and I'm starting to put that in around the head for the feathers. Uh, using a little burnt umber here around the eye to, uh, to really deepen that socket, give it a little shading and um, I'm deliberately doing this just after I've put the wet paint on um, so that dark colour will hopefully uh, begin to diffuse out and look sort of nice and soft and feathery. Carrying on with the bird's feathers, you can see um, I've changed my colour to a slightly darker one. This is the same mix I was using, uh, just with um, a little more burnt sienna added uh, to deepen the colour a little bit. So you can see I'm just going in and filling in all the uh, these sort of buff coloured parts of the bird with this same mix, uh, giving it a sort of a lovely soft overall hue uh, with a larger brush before I then will go in and add a bit more detail later. As you can tell, I've uh, sped this up a little bit just because this was quite a time consuming one on my part because uh, you can see there's a little bit of layering here so I, so I had to let each one dry and then put some more paint on and you know how it is. Uh, you can see I'm sort of dabbing rather using almost messy strokes here, pulling out with a tissue uh, just to get some almost feathery texture in there and then just uh, layering up again building that colour back up, uh, just trying to get the depth of colour and the, uh, the texture that I like. And here we are just adding a little more detail in. Um, I'm using uh, some light red here to uh, add a little bit of darker colour, a little bit of tone and texture into the, um, the sort of more freckly 
uh, freckled part of the jay's head. I believe that that top part of his head was uh, would normally rise up into a crest uh, if alarmed, <laughs> um, which I decided not to paint. I painted it flat. Uh, may do another one. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so you can see I'm starting to build up a bit more colour on this jay. Obviously, these colours are uh, too bright for realism, really. So, uh, but I'm using them as sort of a base colour you know, popping them in and then blotting them back out. Uh, so that was yellow ochre and light red, respectively. Uh, I'm going to do this a couple of times just to try and build up uh, the colours that I want. A little bit of uh, burnt umber in there for good measure. Uh, and today I'm actually using 100% um, cotton paper, um, which uh, enables me to actually do this. Uh, it holds the water really nicely and it allows you a little more flexibility uh, than ordinary sort of uh, standard sort of pulp watercolour paper uh, just gives you that little bit of extra um, wiggle room if you like for uh, making mistakes which <laughs> is something that I, I feel like we all need sometimes Now for these darker parts of the bird's wing, uh, you can see that I'm actually using Payne's grey rather than uh, a full black uh, because I would like uh, some uh, glint of light and some uh, sort of the illusion of colour in there. I find if I do this sort of thing with uh, just black sometimes it can look very flat. Uh, Payne's grey is, is, I think the uh, actual pigment is a mix of uh, black and possibly indigo but I'll have to double check that. But this is the plan. This is uh, pulling some of the uh, pulling some of the colour out, getting a bit of white in there, and then refilling in uh, to get the texture that I'm happy with. Now you can see I'm just using my fine brush to come down the side of this wing here in a very sort of very uh, sketchily sort of manner, just doing lots of little lines here um, using a mixture of uh, yellow ochre and burnt umber um, to give the impression of the feathers. These lovely long uh, wing feathers that you see when the jays are in flight spread out beautifully. Uh, that's the ones that I'm doing now. I wanted to give the impression of texture. Um, this is a nice sort of shortcut, almost cheaty way of doing it. Make sure you leave lots of white uh, and just go in and do those lovely directional quick strokes and there you are. Oh yes, yeah, so we can't forget his, uh, his little black moustache. <laughs>
And you can see here, I'm now going in with my fine brush and just adding in gentle little strokes uh, of detail. You can see I've added a little more on the wing and on the top of the head. This is literally as easy as getting your paint, getting your fine brush and doing some gentle soft strokes uh, in the direction that you want them to go. So I've made him look a little bit more fluffy, um, a little bit more of a raggedy gentleman. <laughs> and now I'm just uh, doing his sort of his trouser area, you could possibly say. <laughs> uh, just using exactly the same techniques that I showed you earlier, sort of putting the layers in, dabbing them out with a tissue to get some texture, and then uh, just re-putting colour in to, to get the de depth of colour that I want and the texture that I want. And just for reference here, the colours that I'm using are still mostly burnt sienna, yellow ochre and light red. Um, I have them all on a palette together uh, and I do tend to sort of mix them up to get the different shades and tones that I need. Uh, this also, this lovely sort of pinkish colour for his sweet little feet is also uh, simply light red, uh, dilated down with plenty of water. It makes this lovely pink that is, is not too pink if... Uh, if that makes sense, you know. And I'm just using uh, some Payne's Grey for uh, the claws that just tip the ends of his feet. And again with the tail feathers, I'm using exactly the same uh, technique that I used earlier on his dark feathers. Uh, I've got my larger brush, uh, I'm just sweeping it across uh, directionally and the, uh, the way that Sort of the feathers naturally tend to go, the sort of the barbs of the feathers sweep downwards. Uh, so I'm trying to mimic that with the brush, um, adding in a little bit of uh, burnt umber for some extra colour, and then just going in and um, carefully making sure uh, that they have the uh, appearance of um, a texture that I'm happy with. The mimicry of feathers. And now for the part that's possibly the most recognisable about our um, our lovely European Jay here, which is that sort of electric blue flash that you get on each wing just at the side. Now it's wonderful to see when you actually see them in the wild or in a park or uh, at the window, which <laughs> sometimes I'm lucky enough to, to see them at our little bird feeding station. Um, for this uh, wonderful colour, I've chosen to use turquoise. Uh, this is a Winsor & Newton turquoise, which uh, has a lovely vibrancy to it. Um, so to begin with, I'm just filling in each individual feather that I've sketched with this blue, um, treating them as individuals. Um, I will go in and put in the dark markings afterwards.
Now for the tricky bit. Uh, so I've got my very fine brush again, which you saw me using earlier, and I'm putting in uh, the stripes on each wing using Payne's Grey and a steady hand, <laughs> which is difficult for me. I, I get quite shaky hands sometimes, so this, this does require concentration. Uh, believe it or not, this is sped up uh, as uh, I took it rather slower when I was actually uh, doing the painting. It's quite a painstaking process. But worth it, I think, <laughs> in the long run. And there we are. Got the feathers complete, got the bird complete. I'm happy with him, with uh, his cheeky little face. Uh, so now I'm just putting in uh, a little bit of background and have him standing on some sort of nice, muddy, mossy, bouldery type thingamajig. <laughs> uh, nothing too fancy. I uh, don't want to distract from the bird as he is the main focus of this painting. But of course, it's, it's, it's nice to have them standing on something. So you can see I'm just um, using a bit of Payne's Grey and a little bit of Burnt Umber here just to uh, put in a bit of detail. Uh, nice directional sweeps of the brush, some nice thick paint, um, giving the impression of a uh, nice rock that RJ has decided to perch upon. Of course, a little tissue dab for um, texture, which was why not? Uh, and now uh, some sap green uh, to just go in there and give the impression of uh, some moss or lichen or algae. <laughs> Perhaps not algae, um, but yes, a nice little bit of uh, nice little bit of moss, a bit of plant growth on there. Uh, I think the green really sort of sings out against the blue and yellow tones uh, in the bird. So uh, yeah, very happy with this. And there we have it, uh, the finished bird. Um, I'm really happy with this. I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I love the uh, expression on his little face. I love the blue. Um, yeah, I love everything about this portrait and I really hope you do too. Uh, thank you for sticking around and watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please leave a like below if you did uh, and feel free to comment on anything else you'd uh, like to see me paint uh, on this channel. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So I hope you will have a lovely day, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, and happy creating!